When people talk about green energy, they're usually talking about how we can turn things like this, or this, into this. But that's only part of the story. Now that we've got electricity, how do we get it from here to here? This isn't a new problem. When everyone wanted electricity in their homes, electric companies had to figure out how to get the power from the plant to their customers. So they built big grids of power lines. Well, the technologies and methods that we use in the distribution system basically have been around since the days of Edison and Tesla. That's over 100 years. Really? We have new ways to generate electricity, but we're still using the same 100-year-old technology to get it where it needs to go? Maybe we need to update that. Hillary Brown at the Colorado School of Mines is working on doing just that. She's on a team that studies electric power systems, and they've come up with some really cool ways to keep the power flowing. But because our current system is already so established, we can't just start from scratch. So how do we improve it without replacing everything? So we have to look at what changes we can make. Okay. So um, what we do is we create a computer model that expresses the system, which would be, say, your house or a business, and to the, the generation sources, which are renewable, so a photovoltaic panel or a wind generator. Okay. And then you have different power lines that connect them. Then you try and minimize the cost that you're putting into the system while maximizing the benefit you're getting out. So an update. That should work. Take what we've already got and make it better. But what are some of the changes we could make? One of the reasons we would want to switch to um, a smart distribution system is because we want to be able to use what's called distributed generation. So instead of having a huge coal plant way over here in your city over here, you're going to have lots of tiny little generators at the different locations in your city, so in an office building or at your house, okay. for example. But adding renewable resources and updating power lines isn't going to solve all our problems. A lot of the time, renewables are far away or unpredictable. That's where the smart grid comes in. So, Sid, a lot of people have been talking about the smart grid lately. Why is it such a big deal and, and how is it going to make our lives different? Well, the issue with renewable energy, largely solar and wind, is the variability in the input. Okay. So we need new devices, new technologies, new methodologies to achieve that. And that is the smart grid. Okay. So your lab is working on ways to make sure that we have a reliable, constant um, stream of electricity, even though the ways that we're getting the electricity might not always be constant. That's right. Ted Song at UT Austin is an engineer working on a new piece of technology that regulates the power that comes from different sources, so we can use it in our homes. Okay, so uh, when you are trying to connect different sources of energy into mm -hmm. one system, uh, we have um, control issues. Um, we have to solve a lot of equations and we have to do computer simulations. And also after computer simulations, we make designs for converters. So you actually had to, to build this entire converter. Yes. Look at all these cool right, things. Right, you know, so it's like, yes, they go like having fun with you know, different <laughs> components. What's that? But it must be fun to be able to build it however right, you want. Right. Kids, you need math. <laughs> Smart Grid won't just help us use renewable energy, it will also help us control the flow of energy to and from our lives. Think about it like a highway. Only right now, things only move in one direction. All the energy is going from the power company to your house. But what if we added another lane in the other direction and built some on-ramps? Suddenly, things are moving back and forth, and the whole system can work more efficiently. And that seems smart. The price of energy isn't actually constant during the day. So what happens is it, it gets more expensive when more people are trying to use it. So the price of electricity is a bit higher then. So you have a certain amount of loads that you can adjust. That's they're just they're just they are what they are. So by loads you mean like big draws of electricity. Right, like your dishwasher, your washing machine, your clothes dryer, things like that that you know that if you ran them at 6 p.m. or 2 o'clock in the morning, eh, you don't really like, you're not, you're not really going to care. So this information about when I want to do my laundry or run my dishwasher ends up directing the flow of traffic on the electricity highway. So it's 
a lot of times easy to explain what you work on if you build something and at the end you can show somebody, mm -hmm. this is what I made. <laughs> at the end the light turned on. Yeah. So for you, what would be success? Uh, success for me would be having something that's user friendly. Doing what they call shifting the peak load. Okay. Which is during that time when everyone gets home from work and turns everything on. If you can move it, you save a lot of money, is really what it is. So your definition of success is helping people save money. Yep, helping people save money. Mm -hmm. like one house at a time. <laughs> and it's not just about saving money. Let's say your house has solar panels on the roof and you're actually converting more energy than you need. You could sell that excess electricity back to the power company. That's good for you and the environment. Electricity. Our lives are all about it. More than ever, we need better ways to keep the energy moving so it can keep us moving. We've been doing it the same way for so long that we almost forget how the power for our laptops and cell phones even gets there. Smart Grid will help us change where our electricity comes from and how we all use it. Because the power that charges your smartphone should be just as smart.